Hello and welcome again to a little conversation about NVIDIA Isaac Sim robotics and my own development. My name is Kamate Richards. This video is in no way uh, affiliated with my day job at, at uh, AWS or my conversations with NVIDIA, which I, I do quite a bit. This is just me talking about my own experiences with Omniverse and, and other tools, ROS2, et cetera. Um, a little bit of Fusion 360 and other tools that I might use. So we started with a project that uh, was, was intended to be a pick and place platform, which I feel is uh, quite, quite ambitious but we're still gonna go about it. We're building it currently in, in the background. In the foreground, I wanted to really work on simulation. I wanted to work on machine learning components and those kinds of things. A lot of things have happened. One, Omniverse has, has put out more of its own tooling. Now this Omniverse Create, Omniverse Code, and updates for Isaac Sim. The other things that uh, have happened is if I had mouth surgery, so I couldn't actually talk for a long time uh, on on video it really sounded like I was uh, slurring most of my words so that would not have helped us very much at all in that process moving on here's where we are today we've asked Nvidia for lots of different tools and they're building them quite rapidly one thing that it hasn't really democratized this kind of development and NVIDIA is doing a great job of putting out tools to help uh, everyday developers really scale um, just just an amazing job of what they've done but it requires a kind of a beefier processor to run Isaac Sim and a few other NVIDIA tools uh, NVIDIA has released NVIDIA uh, Omniverse Cloud I believe it's called so that's one option I haven't quite used it yet Another option is to actually stream from a cloud provider uh, Omniverse without, uh, in a headless mode, and then to use either the Omniverse client or web browser to uh, receive the stream. That's what we're going to do today. It's going to be a short video, I believe, about 10 minutes. And then the next time around, we'll get into uh, some of the newer parts of uh, the Omniverse and Isaac Sim as well as start to dive a little bit deeper into our own project. So first things first, where do you find this installation? If you type in NVIDIA AWS uh, EC2 or something like that, you'll, you will receive uh, the first link that says, you know, install advanced Isaac Sim setup remote headless container. The first thing you want to do is make sure you have met all these requirements. Number one, you need to have an AWS account. It does cost money. And to, to operate the free tier doesn't quite help you because you don't have the, the compute power necessary to run Isaac Sim. The, a, good, a good instance will probably run you about 3 or $4 an hour, which is so much cheaper than buying a beefy computer a desktop and what I found is that my development stalled I was on the road quite a bit over the last few months in various countries and cities and I still wanted to work on Isaac Sim I did not have my desktop which is you know a US dollar about seven thousand dollar desktop and I was carrying around my uh, uh, I would call it a year and a half two years old really great machine for a year ago. I'm carrying that around, still want to do development. So, in conclusion, and I ended up using a remote container myself, and I looked at the AWS requirements. I haven't quite tried this in Azure, uh, simply because I work for AWS, but, uh, and this is no way affiliated with them, like I said. But y you, you should, look at the instance requirements here and we're going to just briefly roll into them instance g4dn 2x large or higher i went much higher than that and i'll show you in a second and then you're going to set up using this ami which is a machine image of 
up onto 1804 with Isaac Sim in mind. It's not, it's not uh, completely installed, but it's in mind. This army may not be visible in Hong Kong. You should know that. Middle East, Bahrain, and Milan. I don't know why, but it may not be, so it don't hurt me if it isn't. There's other ways to build up a container that you might might be able to use if you need those instructions. I have them here, um, and they, they work just as well. Okay, so I'm not going to run through all these. Just know uh, that this is this is available, and I'll I'll put this in the links. The part that you really really need, other than ad adding storage, which you can always add storage, um, you know, later on, it's not not an issue. Is you need to make sure that not only the IP range that you're going to utilize. Or the IP address is listed here, maybe your IP or whatever it is you're going to use, but that you might need to add dis different TCP connections as well. I, I found that uh, for myself, that I had to add uh, TCP 2777 for this to work. And so you can see here, if you go to my running machine image, And we go over security. Oh, expired. EC2. Instances. Got a running instance, G4DN16X large. Yours doesn't have to be that big, but that's what I chose. And then back here in security. Here I have port 2777 open plus my um, my IP address for my other machine that I'll be operating on. So there we go. So this is running and from there I can SSH into it and begin doing these instructions. So first thing is you need to generate an NGC API key. How you go about that is you need to log in. And log in here. That's me. It's going to ask you certain things that it's not going to ask me because I'm already uh, oh, Tau, I'd already asked for early access, but I'm going to apply while we're all on the phone here. Join. Sweet. Well, it's uh, too much work. Anyway. Um, so, we're going to go over to Setup. And in Setup, you're going to generate an API key. Well, I'm not because I already have one, but you click on Generate API Key, and then uh, I think it's like Generate Now or something like that up in the upper right-hand corner. It's going to create an API key for you to copy that and utilize later on in your applications. Okay. From there, uh, you're going to ensure that this machine image um, has the required uh, NVIDIA uh, drivers. And I just checked that. So this is how you would do that here. And you want to get access to the Isaac Sim container here using your developer program credentials. So again, you want to you go off to Isaac Sim and make sure you have uh, access to the container, just like this, okay? Okay, then here, these steps. So you're gonna Docker login your NGC key that you just created that you just should have saved. And then when you have login succeeded, pull the container. Uh, oh, you should be SSH'd by the way, by this point. So way back here before this command, before this command, SSH into your uh, EC2 instance. How you go about that is here. If I click on connect, SSH client, I can SSH using this command like this, 
So it expects that I have my key that you should have created using the steps above. Uh, SSH into your uh, EC2 instance and then start running these commands. Uh, docker pull, docker run, and then you should see a, uh, a uh, let's see if I can show it to you real quick without exposing all of my, my goodies. You should end up, uh, after you docker run uh, and then run the headless native, you have many options there. You can run WebSockets. There's tons of options um, that NVIDIA supports. How you find those, if you go to uh, base installation uh, or container installation, then you can see all the different deployment options. Okay, you can see here, a lot of stuff is going on, stuff, 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 and then it says app ready after 18 seconds, but uh, after about the first time around, I think it took like two minutes, did it finally say Isaac Sim headless native app is loaded? So app ready was one thing at about 20 seconds the first time around, and then two minutes later, the uh, app loaded native app is loaded showed up. Okay, so app is loaded, and now I can just do whatever I want. Then the next part of this is I'm going to receive the stream, and I can receive it on the same the, the same uh, device that I have to be on now, or I can receive it on another. Uh, and in my case, I'm going to run a Windows machine uh, so I can actually use the Omniverse streaming client rather than just the browser. So in part two of this, which is coming right now, we'll get into the, the next thing. See you there.